Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and I'm live and coming to you from uh, my office at work. And today's topic is IV contrast. Now, I think you have heard enough about IV contrast the last week and truly the last couple of days to last you a lifetime. But, um, and this is not about IV contrast, like what injection rate you use, whether we like Omni or Visi, whether you do it at five cc's or four cc's. This is about, do you have enough contrast to get by? Um, just some summary statements, you know, GE has about 70% of the market. GE has a few sites worldwide. The number one site is in Shanghai, okay? And it works very well. You order contrast, they make the contrast, you buy the contrast, you use the contrast. Well, as all of you have been paying attention, we've had lots of different problems in the world because of COVID and the breakdown in the international distribution of everything. Now, remember, the biggest thing pre-COVID was how well things would work. You would be eating something in Baltimore that was made in China two days ago. You get your iPhone that was shipped from Shanghai to Vietnam to Baltimore. Everything was perfect. Well, if you read the newspapers, and let's stay out of contrast for a second, Tim Cook, when he did the uh, quarterly report for Apple, said that due to shortages of important materials, they were unable to take orders for about $6 billion worth of merchandise, mainly iPhones, in that quarter, which was the first quarter of the year, and the prior quarter, and he felt that that would keep going on for a number of years. If you read the uh, or listened to the report from the CFO of Ford, Ford Motor Company, he will tell you that because of chip shortages, they're unable to manufacture cars to the point that they only have a certain number of chips, and they make a bunch of different cars. I'm not a car expert, but they have this thing called the F. 150, which is their best seller. They make a lot of money. I think it's like a truck or something. Well, what, they'll, what they're doing is whatever chips they get, they use in the F-150s because they can sell a lot of those and those make a lot of money. But some of the other cars, the Mustangs, other cars, they're not making them. And the wait for a car is nine to 12 months because there's no ability to make the cars. In fact, the CFO went on, and this is literally this week. So it's not like six months ago or something I'm making up, but he announced that uh, upon questioning that uh, Ford in their plants had 53,000 cars that were already wheels up, which means the cars are totally finished, except for the fact is they were missing some chips and so they can't sell the cars. So the cars are totally built. As soon as they would put the chips in, they'd be able to drive them away and sell them but they don't know when they're gonna get those chips. So it's not any one industry, it's affecting everybody. Now let's take contrast. Contrast is made in, I think GE has three sites. One of them, the main site is in China. It's in Shanghai. Well, Shanghai has been in a lockdown. You can't leave your house, right? Uh, you read about it in the paper. Now, I don't like to criticize or question China, um, they have excellent leaders, I'm sure, but the idea of the way you fight COVID is to lock down 20 or 30 million people, or at some point there were hundreds of millions of people locked down where you can't even go out. Okay, that's sheer madness. Get a vaccine, for God's sakes. The Chinese vaccine doesn't work all that well. Buy the Pfizer, buy the Moderma, get a vaccine that works. You've got billions of people, get them back to work. What China has done has actually hurt themselves, and I'm not going to go into that because China had a very good deal because everyone was using China because they were so reliable, high quality, low cost. It was great. But now what you've done is made people realize they can't rely on you because your policies are a little bit off the wall, you know, closing down the entire city. So basically for a number of weeks... Uh, Shanghai was unable to, no one got to work. And so there was no way of making any merchandise. And let me just disconnect my phone here. I don't know why it's connected. No one was able to create any merchandise. Uh, now, from what I understand, what they did is they put people, this is what Tesla did at one point. They put people in the factory and I think they sleep in the factory. 
They get fed in the factory, they sleep in the factory. The truth is I'd rather be working and sleeping in the factory than sleeping at home with no food. So it's good to be in the factory. You go with some friends, you know, you, you make some contrast. But then again, you have to ship the contrast. There's problems with shipping. Maybe they can fly it over. Uh, G is saying that they're shipping 20 or 30%. They hope to get more contrast within a couple of weeks from their other plants, which I forget is two other plants, but none are really U.S.-based. And they hope that within mid-June, things will be back to normal. So things invariably will be back to normal. I have no doubt about that. I think at that point, you need to be thinking, what is it you do to make sure this doesn't happen again? One of the things that every hospital or outpatient center does is you minimize how much contrast you have gets delivered every week or every number of days because it's very efficient. Well, this morning I looked at our contrast, our Omni 350. Do you know when it expires? February 2025. So I think what you're going to have to do, and we learned this the hard way with gloves, we learned it with uh, gowns, we learned it with masks. They're simple, but when you don't have them, you don't have them. And so we store, when we store days of masks, we store, we store months of masks. And perhaps what you need to do in the future, of course, some money, take some space, store contrast. Whatever contrast you use in your hospital, your outpatient center, instead of storing three days or six days, store six months. It's just you need to be safe. And I recommend also you make sure you have enough tubing and needles and injectors because everything can be short. I think GE did not do this on purpose. GE loves to sell contrast. They love to do the customer service. That's not the issue. It's things beyond anybody. You read what's going on in the Ukraine, and we wish the Ukrainian people all the best. They're very brave. They're doing well. But the Ukrainian crisis has created many other things, and you're seeing food shortages. People will starve because Ukraine is a food basket for the world. There's so many things. There's interconnectivity. Interconnectivity is great, but you have to have the interconnectivity work. We've now found where the interconnectivity does not work. And so we have all sorts of problems. So going forward, I think also one of the things that companies are doing, like Intel, Western Digital, instead of having factories in Korea, factories in Taiwan, factories in China, you're building factories in the U.S. Many states want jobs and will give you some really good tax deductions. So you can build factories in the South, in the North, in the Rust Belt, in the, in the Sun Belt, wherever you want to do it, build factories. I think it's very important. And maybe what GE needs to do, and we can encourage them, and help support them, is build a factory in the U.S. So we're never hostage to someone else's behavior. Uh, in the short term, what could you do? Okay, there's a very good thing from the ACR came out yesterday, so I'm not going to repeat it. But the obvious things are, Manage contrast well, okay? Do not use more than you need to do. Uh, it's Usually it's not an issue. Now it's an issue. So just make sure you use it carefully. If you don't need to study with contrast, don't do it with contrast, but that's true all the time. you got to be careful. You don't want to give less contrast, which you have to do a little bit, and you can get by, but you want to be very careful that you don't do less contrast where the studies aren't as accurate. The last thing you want to do is someone go to surgery because you don't see liver mets because you didn't see it because the contrast was bad. So you need to kind of work around that. When it's possible, get a different study. If your protocol is for adrenal CT, which is the correct protocol, maybe for the next few weeks, get a little bit more MR. But some things get a little bit more ultrasound. If you can avoid it, people recommend getting a routine follow-up, lymphoma, maybe put it off a month, okay? Then you would be able to decrease the need for contrast. The last thing you want, we want, our patients want, is a bad study. The one thing you don't want to do is do a study that's not diagnostic where you don't answer the question that needs to be answered. So we need to do whatever we can, decreasing the contrast, but not decreasing it to the point where quality is being hurt. So decreasing volumes, using other studies, postponing things, those are all strategies you can read about. I think the ACR... Um, came out with a statement and some policy the other day. Speak to your referring physicians. Remember also in the hospital, it's not just radiology, it's cardiology uses contrast. 
radiation therapy, other departments. So everyone needs to help out. And I think if we help out, I think we'll get through this. GE is trying their hardest to produce the contrast and deliver the contrast. So maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll be kind of almost back to where we are. Hopefully, if I spoke to you a month from now, we'll be back where we should be. But remember, we can't just say, oh, back to normal, no problems. We really need to sit down and think, work with our vendors to figure out what is it that we can do to make sure this does not happen again in the future. Because these shortages, all of these problems are something that's not a event of May 2022. It's an event going forward. And we need to mitigate against anything that decreases the quality of care for our patients. So our patients demand the contrast, they demand the best studies, and we are going to do that. So with that, I wish you a great day. And I also will tell you, there's a, a hot article coming out from the RSNA, that's what I've heard secondhand, which will address a lot of the questions. And I would read that article, it should be coming within days, okay? And with that, I wish everybody a great day. And uh, we're on YouTube. You know, we have 37,000 of you who are signed up for our YouTube channel. We have an incredible channel. We've done Facebook Live. We're now going to spend a lot of time on YouTube. We can have chats. We can talk. We can have group discussions. We are going to uh, do this. Um, I think it's very important that, um, you know, we, we all kind of work together. So with that... I, and by the way, I was a couple minutes late. I think uh, the main reason was on, on Wednesday, which is today, I give conference 12 to 1. And someone was going over a case of longer haunts. I didn't want to stop them. Uh, so I didn't want to interrupt Tony Lynn. He was, he was on a roll and doing a great job. So I apologize if I'm a minute late. But um, we'll see you on YouTube next time. And with that, have a great day. Mm -hmm.